Hello everybody and welcome to another special episode of On the Workbench. Now this is going to be real different and I'll say this right now, your eyes aren't deceiving you because the thing on that screen is that big. So here is my hand next to that. It's a wee bit bigger than anything you've seen me do. Now I have actually done one of these half size busts in the past. I'll show you that in a little bit. But to give you a, another sense of scale, so here is the same species bust. Now this is, I believe, in one eighth scale right here. This is the Micromania busts. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and match this color scheme. I think you can see the reference pictures on either side. We are going to try and match some of this on this. Now, like I said, the <laughs> it's a little bit bigger, and we are going to do this in multiple pieces because... Uh, you can see how big this this cornucopia is right here. That's what I've been calling it. Again, this alone probably weighs a couple of pounds. And that's not going to fit on my... This is my little airbrush setup right here. It's got a fan for absorbing some of the vapors, which is always a good idea. Now, to avoid doing voiceovers, well, I'm not going to be wearing a mask, so this will be turned on here. And we can talk about that too. But let's get to right here. So you can see, uh, was that the one all the way on the right there? That is the one we're working on, the seal species bust. We might try and do more of that glossy type stuff. I'm going to show you the ghost tints. And you see those at work, you'll see how things can get glossy in a hurry. Now there's a couple other ones like the Caracolia and the uh, Nalathotep. I'm thinking that those could be fun, but that is, see the Angelique bust? That's the one that I painted last year at Gen Con. And we're making this basically the week before Gen Con right here, so I will be painting in the booth. See right there, that was with the Metal Smith paint, basically using the metallic primer, mixing it with ghost tints. And you can see all the nifty effects that we could do there. So there's there's George. And actually, oh, look, there's the species bust right there in his little display. So you can see that one also had to be painted in pieces because it was just so huge. So that gives you a little sense of scale as to how big these things are. Now I'll just take you some pictures of the other bust. And I wanted you to see some of the other views that I just, I couldn't get all the pictures on screen. So obviously lots of yellows, lots of green, but there is around the eye. See, look around the eyes and the, and, and the nose. That's a bluish green. Why is that bluish green? Because the eyes have a lot of orange in there. So this is where we're going to play on, and I'll be turning down the saturation so you can see this. I call it the fifth pillar of contrast, where it's not just light versus dark red versus green whatever but it's also saturated versus unsaturated warm versus cool so that was one of the pictures that i have been working from so we you know, maybe i throw some of that glossy stuff over the top we'll see and the cornucopia there some of that's going to be done with the brush so not all of this is, is going to be done with the airbrush in fact the eyes i'm just going to do on the brush some of the stuff here down on the chest but the airbrush can get us a good portion of the way there. Even on that Angelique bust, I didn't use the airbrush for the whole thing. I still did stuff with the brush afterwards. So yeah, look, you can see all the that, that bluish green there. Look it in the eyes there. It's almost a little bit bloodshot, like there's blood vessels. Well, it's so much easier, and the spots, it's easier to do that with a brush. Now, I'll go back to our original scene here. We're going to start out with the usual Steino Res primers. And we've got some dark browns. This, I believe, is the, I call it the reddish brown. There's also a really nice, this one is referred to as ebony. This is the dark brown right here. We might even use the green. There's, I think by now, there's something like 14 different colors of primer. Why not essentially pre shade this with all of these? Look at this. So we have pink, there's a flesh tone color, and this is all a giant hunk of resin, and there's no other way to do it except for me to grab this with my hand. Why not have six or seven layers of primer on here before we get to the painting aspect of this? 
as far as the painting goes we're really going to focus in on these so here we've got ghost tint that's the yellow right there you will be seeing oh probably the magenta and purple a little bit so there's your magenta there is a green let's see if i can find that one there's a purple here you'll be seeing the brown for sure there's a green and there's the the plasma fluid one so here we go green now what i'm going to do let's see i think this one is already open i am just gonna put this out on a just a paper towel here where it's white so you can see it's not it's not a cool green it actually has a little bit of warmth to it but you can see just how now look at that it went right through the towel so these are very intense colors that's where we're going to utilize these we still also have just the regular minotaurs <laughs> look at that boring green when you mix this with a little ghost tint it's almost like the contrast paints mixed with regular paint okay a lot of these principles the tool may be different so let's say we're going to use your 105 Patriot this this is going to do the bulk of the work here if not all of it because again we're using the brush too I have some rubbing alcohol some of the brush cleaner we'll talk about some simple ways of keeping the brush relatively clean and I guess I've got this this little airbrush booth here it's not too shabby it's about $96 on Amazon heck I can even put a link in the description for you it's got a couple of filters it usually has the hose with it and it, it's nice it's a and it, it's compact you can take it down if you need to and you can buy more filters and maybe six seven dollars a piece or so you know we might even play with colors like this mostly mixing these in with other colors so I think that just about covers our materials and planning and now this is a very different setup and this is obviously a different challenge so we'll rotate this around you can see right here I've got a I'm gonna move this out I'm just gonna make sure that she actually rotates all the way around there we go so this just gives you a sense here's again my hand I'm touching this thing just how monstrous this thing is and what we'll do is we'll get down with those layers of primer and we'll just call it primer painting it's it's a phrase that I came up with a while back and we'll see what kind of generalized colors we can get on this and I'll be right back with that so we're back and that noise that you might hear in the background that is the ventilation system at work and we've flipped the screen so now you can read the words dino res again this is a whole different setup and the monitor is about five feet away from me so I could just see that there was a jar in hand this is that dark brown the ebony color and what we'll do is we'll just we're not really looking to get any specific colors here right now all we're worried about for the most part is coverage so I may be holding this in little different directions but you can see we've got this probably set I don't know I know everybody's asking about PSI and everything else. This is probably at 40 or 50 right now because all we're interested in is coverage. But see, even at 40, 50 PSI, I can still do you know, a gentle application here. It doesn't have to be a gigantic water cannon like application. Let's see, we're doing this relatively confined. I do suggest that you use, yeah, you're going to hear the compressor go off too. That's just kind of one of the things that's going to happen. Now, when I start doing the rest of this, and everything we do is much smaller, oh, you're not going to hear that thing go off quite so much. It is the larger compressor. the I guess it's called a tankless one. So let's see how small we can get here. So can you... Here, we'll put this, I'll go up here on the face so you can see it. So you can see even at that pressure, see we can still, can still get a relatively fine application there. So just because we've got the PSI set at a higher level than maybe what 
you're used to people doing doesn't mean that we're just going to sandblast our way right through this thing. Now the cornucopia, we're going to do exactly the same thing like we're doing here. So I may just show that part just a little bit of it because you can see what we're doing here. There's really nothing super elaborate about this. You can see that I'm focusing in on the lower levels here, the deepest recesses, at least initially. So I'm going to see if I can't, maybe I'll try and move our, before this goes off again, I'm going to see if I can't move it over a little bit. Now, the more I move it away, the shorter my hose gets here. So. He just moved it about four or five feet away. Maybe that will make a little bit of a difference there. There, so and just once again focusing on the deepest recesses. And I think too, if I use a little more gentle application like this, it might go off a little bit less. To be honest, I'm not really used to using it that way, because I think as you've seen, I'm this is mostly a priming tool for me. So while wow, that's going on, I'm just going to give that a nice big old shot here and get this going quicker. What the heck, it's making noise anyway. Here, yeah, let's just get this covered real quick like. I think you get the general gist of what's going on. Now that's the nice thing about the 105 is you got a big old cup like that and it really holds, holds a lot of paint. Or in my case, a whole lot of primer, which, hey, I like that too. There's also some little things that go on the side of her face. I, I don't even know what the heck you would call them. Some sort of vestigial things. I will maybe just paint those again off, off screen, because otherwise this will be a five hour tutorial. And I don't, I don't think you need to See every last second of the airbrushing of some some kind of tentacle ears, whatever they are. So again, we're just gonna leave the pressure cranked up. We are just gonna hit this, blam. And you can see, just really cover this all at once. Just looking to, like I said, I'm looking to get primer everywhere. That is my main goal here. I'll just go from the top here. Now the one thing I don't have the ability to do quite as much here is change my angle. And let's just go from the top here. It's also pretty warm down here because there's no air conditioning in the basement. So paint might act a little differently here. Alright, that pretty much takes care of your main body. I don't want to warm this place up even more by using the hair dryer. So what I will do is grab the thing I was telling you about. See the little things that go on the side of her face right here? And we'll just we'll work some primer on these too. And if I get the names of the primer colors wrong, I apologize that we just, we sort of just assigned them our own because there's no name on the jar. There is nothing that identifies what primer that color is, at least the last I checked. Ah, I see a little, some areas here that could use some. So here we'll, we'll put this up here and it's on screen. How, you can see we can do a reasonably fine application for just, again, this thing is set at super high PSI. Now I will, I'm even going to grab the, I'm just going to keep calling it the cornucopia here. And let's get some of the ebony primer on that to it. 
Like I said, I won't cover the entire surface of it because you don't need to just see me endlessly putting on brown primer. I'm just waiting for some of this to, to dry here. So, and plus this, I really have to go at this from a million different angles. And that would just get really boring for you to see. Yeah, we'll just... Look at all those little crevices there. I gotta get down in all of these crevices with it. I have to say though, it is what I like about, look at this. So look at that big old crevice right in there. The airbrush makes it a little bit easier than say in the old days when we used to brush primer on. That was no fun. Trying to get primer down in there. So like I said, once I run out of the brown primer here, I'm probably going to grab some of the green. And we'll actually let that little bit of green mix with sort of the remnants of the brown. Now, if I, I'm going to listen to this, and if it is just too noisy with that compressor going, I guess I'll do a voiceover. I, like I said, I really hate doing those. To me, it's just very disembodied, and it's almost it's almost worth it just to hear the stuff in the background, to actually hear a live person talking. Like I said, this is the first time I've tried one of these. All right, so we've used up all of our brown primer. I'm just going to set this thing aside, get it out of the way. Now we can try some other some other colors. Let's try some of the some of this green right here. It's sort of like a, oh, a camo green I guess. And what I also might do is turn down my PSI a little bit. Now I'll just I'll go with what I got. Just to see what happens. Okay so good. I think that's I'm gonna try and lower this down a little bit and see what we're going to do here. Just a little gentle dusting. Try not to wipe out the brown that's underneath there. Well, that's not a bad angle, actually. You can, you can see the paint coming on there, but my hand is not in the way. So you see, this is all primer, but it looks, it looks like we're actually painting that. In theory, with just a primer and some of the ghost tints, I could paint this whole darn thing. That Angelique bust that you saw, well, that was majority primer. It, well, actually, it was primer and ghost tints. Not majority, it was all primer and ghost tints. So you can see we're just kind of gently go over the top here. Now, sometimes your angle of attack matters. It really can make a difference. And sometimes, yeah, you can't see this off camera. I start up the airbrush out here and then approach the figure instead of just going Psst, right here. So I've, I don't like to just have the brush here and then press the trigger. I like to have the brush back here, press the trigger, get it started, and then gently work my way towards the object that I'm painting. So you can see it doesn't take long before we're getting some color on here. We're getting a little shading because as as you can see the green is a little bit lighter than the brown. But the brown still shows through. There. And I'm going to do the same process on this that I'm doing here to those other pieces, to the, to the cornucopia as we're going to call it. I, I'm sure carapace was probably what the intended term is. Now, can you see what I just did there? You got, look at that. There's a, this light green shading here and then it gets dark over here. Why? Because I'm approaching it this way. I'm going this way with it. That means I gotta switch around and do the opposite. I'm also, see I've got a little bit of a line working its way down here, watch. I think you can see that. 
and then look at here I think you can see these top couple here approaching it top down I'm getting shading by default I'm literally using the object to shade itself but now we got to do that on the other side which means we got to turn this around and do some of the same stuff on this side Now, once again, we're going to, our angle of attack, you know, let's move that back a little bit, then you can see it, you know, let's point that down, and see along the, along that spine right there, see how it shades the side of it, so we're doing all this nifty stuff, like I said, with little more than two colors of primer, that's all it is. It doesn't have to be nuclear physics. It can be simple. It really can. And there's just such a desire. Oh, look at this. As I move that away, you can see how much color we've actually put down on this thing. And we have yet, we've barely begun to paint. Barely begun to paint. I can mix colors, I can mix my primer colors together. You know, I could have mixed metallic in with these primers and given it some kind of metal sheen. There's, there's so many possibilities and, and I wish, now when I mention them to people, they say, oh yeah, I guess you could do that. I just wish people would kind of instinctively go, oh yeah, what if I just mix this and then try it? But there's not really that much of a desire to try things. So see how much lighter that gets. I'm having a good old time here. That's that's what I like about these half size busts. Now let's do the face here. I'm try and turn this around. I'm gonna lift up our camera here. Now we're trying to do that same top down angle here. So you can see the difference between those two eyes. We're going to do the same thing again. Top-down approach. From the side here. But let's not lose let's not lose all of the green there. Or all of the brown. At a certain point maybe we should see I'm almost, actually I'm almost out of the green. Now, a couple of things I can do. I am actually thinking of starting to put in some of this yellow. Now, it, it's a little bit more tricky, but what, let's see if we can't get this yellow. Ah, there we go. The yellow Steiner resin here. This may be a new jar, so I'm going to have to open it. I could also mix some regular paint in there, too, but I just we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. So it's a new jar. I'm going to get the top off of this thing here. Now, if you're going to stop even for a couple of minutes, you really should put the brush cleaner through this and run it through it and then just, it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but just run the brush cleaner through it. So you can see we've got some of that yellow in there. Now let's hit some of these areas. I'm going to put the camera back down here. going to let the face dry a little bit. And yeah, look at what we're doing. Now, see how that everything on this side picks up a little bit of a highlight right there? See if we can't do that on the other side. I'm going to move myself over here. And I'm going to spray from this oblique angle. So see what we just did there? See how we picked up that kind of soft shading? That's the advantage of using the airbrush. Why the heck not use the airbrush? So let's give this little gentle spray here. So I'm going to call that a carapace. Still going to call the other thing a cornucopia though. So I'm going to again approach from the from above and let this thing shade itself. Okay, so we got this. Let's turn this around. You can see we just don't have that type of shading over on the other side. We're going to add that now. So once again I'm going to spray from the side here. So I pick up these. 
I'm even going to move it this way so that I can approach from this side. There. Now I want to approach from above. Uh, sorry, my thumb is in the in the view there. That's just kind of how it's be. It's going to be. But we want to. So look what we got right here. Yeah, all of this nifty light to dark shading, and we didn't have to kill ourselves to do it. Oh, and it's also primer. It's just primer, which means we can handle this a little bit more and not destroy it or take the paint away from it because, well, it's primer instead of paint. So we're going to do, a, a, again, another top-down approach over here. And it now this yellow right here, it's not intense enough. So what I'm going to do is, is throw a ghost tint over the top of it. And that's, I, I know I'm going to be doing that, so it's kind of part of the plan. It's like Cylons. I have a plan. So you can see, doing that top down thing here again. See it like this. Top down approach. Now, the other sculpt didn't have as many of these things on it, so we're just. And even, yeah, the negative, that's just kind of dark there. So, again, we're, we're adding and do the same thing on this side here. So, from above. Trying to take advantage of the natural shape of this thing. Now, for those of you that are going to be at Gen Con, you stop by the Badger booth. Well, I'll have another one of these, and I'll be doing something like this there. Actually, you could even buy the hard copy video on a USB from me, because, well, I'll have them there. You know, I'm just going to do the same thing again. Approach from above. Just gonna put a little more yellow in here. Just a little more yellow. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna let all this settle and dry just a bit. See the nifty shading that we're starting to get here. I'm gonna get some more primer on those other pieces, where it's just gonna not even really fit on camera too well. So we're just going to get the ends of these, again, from the top down. You know, let's say I don't want to hit this. Well, even a, a simple mask like that is enough. I could put something over here. So there's ways to mask this off. I can use blue tack if I want to. There's lots of different things that you can use. All right, let's make this, I'm going to go a touch lighter here. All right, so that is the end of my, actually, no, i got to put a little more yellow because I want the face to get some yellow on it. It's not much, not much. I'm just going to gently spray on a little yellow right there. Maybe a touch more on the cheekbones. And a touch more up here. So see, I can, it starts to get a little more fine, the approach. There, a little more even. All right. So what we'll do is, like I said, off camera, I'm going to get those first few layers of primer on this right here. And then we'll come back again. We'll start to maybe maybe even add some ghost tints to this and show you how that process works. So we'll be right back. So just before we get to the ghost tints, I'm going to add this is the final layer. You can see we did the brown and the green over that. Just going to do a little dusting of the yellow over the top here. And you can see it's we're not trying to wipe out all of the previous shading. We're just just after that one little arc. So you can see it's it's darker up here, and then we're going to add a little bit of light. We're going to do that top-down focus again. So I'm going to start up the brush, kind of get it going, 
and see how it does that little bit of shading right there. Let's get our other little vestigial piece here. Now, unfortunately, I didn't, there was nothing else I could do but just set it on the table. So it took away a little bit of it as it dried because I didn't have the hair dryer down here. And, well, it's been enough sounds. You didn't need to hear a hair dryer sound also. So there we go. Once you get into this phase of it, there's a little bit less of the heavy-duty painting going on. So here is your... Here's our cornucopia here. And we're going to do some... Again, we're going to hold this to the side here and we're going to spray you can see we're just capturing the tops of that so I'm going to spin it around rotate it around and all that happens is I catch the the top of the almost like dragon scale toward the thing see what we're doing here just now you can see I've turned off the uh, whatchamacallit there the spray boots so we're getting a lot of I'm going to turn that back on just briefly here, get rid of some of those little fumes, and we're going to put put her back out on her little thing right here. Just make sure she's on there. I don't want, this thing is really heavy. don't want this thing falling off. All right. So let's move this up a bit. Going to make sure I've got enough clearance here. Looks like I do. I remember I was telling you about we were thinking about adding some some ghost tints. So I'm going to move the primers out of the way here. And I'm going to start, I think, with something along the lines of this. Either the yellow or the golden yellow, which is this right here. The idea is I'm going to go over some of these areas with it. Now I am going to just use some of the brush cleaner here. I'm just going to run it through. Because now that I'm doing the, the ghost tin, I, I want to get some of the primers that are out of there. So you can see I'm just, again, just running that through. I will take a paper towel here and, and clean out some of the cup. Because that will that'll get into the ghost tint and affect it a little bit. All right. That is just about there. Now some of these might be new jars. And what am I thinking about doing? I'm trying to get a little more of the yellow that you see there. Something a little bit more intense. Because, I mean, the primers, they're obviously not designed to be very intense in terms of color. So let's see what happens. So you can see right away just how translucent that is. And we're going to just start to spread it over the top and you are going to right there so look at the difference here see how that's just and remember tint is the key word it's it yeah it'll darken it down a little bit but the idea is tint it so in, in some ways you almost prime it a little bit lighter than when it's eventually going to be knowing see we're just going to put the tints over the top and this is really I'll spin it back so look at what happened there and then look at here see that's almost kind of a dead color there now we breathe a little bit of life into it and that is the nifty thing about the ghost tints is that you put down these lighter primer colors and now it's, it's like you're putting a glaze on them but you're doing it with the airbrush now, one thing that I will say, the ghost tints, they have a gloss to them. And you will want to seal these as well. It's not quite like, I say, I would say doing a candy coat or something like that. But it's, it's, in, the, it's in the neighborhood. So you can see we're just kind of, this is how we take advantage of all that primer painting. Yeah, look at that. Here, let's get this, some of it up here too. So we've just changed it, and our green, all of a sudden now, has a whole different flavor to it. It's It's got this nifty warmth to it now. It's got a little more depth to it. 
Here, let's kind of get my light in here. And yeah, voila. We, we completely changed this thing around in a couple of seconds, and all we did was spray some ghost tints on it. Now, probably, and if I just had more time, I would have liked to have worked lighter with the primer, knowing that I was going to do this later, but uh, we can still go back and forth. It's no, no big tragedy. Yeah, that is just really so nifty. Now what I'm going to do is give her a few sprays up here. Take this down. And then we'll see what happens when we do this on these pieces real quick. All right, because we want the same same color on them. Yeah, look at what that does. See how we just completely changed that around. I'm just gonna go in with a brush. Those those stupid areas, yeah, I could have could have pinned them or something like that. Again, this is an entirely new filming area. Never really tried anything like this before. Yeah, look at that. Now here, let me grab the other one. Look at the difference. The one here with the ghost tints, this one not. It's just it's a couple of spritzes with the ghost tint. It's nothing more than that. It, it may take a little bit of planning, you know, and you got to get a little bit used to working with the primers and you get a feel for what each one does. But look at this. I, I'm just completely changing the color of that green. But I have the brown underneath too. Yeah, look at that. And it's just it's a bit of an overspray over the top of it. That is it. Nothing else. Now, let's see. I have that golden. You know, this is probably a new jar. You want to give it a decent shake. Let's see. Is it new? It is new. And you can see the difference here. Look at how reddish that is. So I think she's had a little chance to dry here. At this at this stage, things are going to dry a whole lot faster because we are just not applying anywhere near as much. All right, I'm going to give myself a few last sprays of this yellow here in a few places till it basically runs out. I'm going to hit a few things here. Spray out the rest. And let's put in this golden yellow. Wow, it, it looks basically orange by comparison. Look at the difference there. Yeah, check that out. See what we get. All right. Now I'm going to point that down. And I can see the reddishness that it's starting to add. Yeah. I'm going to turn this back on again. I can just see some clouds of stuff emerging. So I think that's just one noise you're going to have to... You'll just have to live with that noise. Like I said, I can, can try and do a voiceover on this, but I am really averse to, to doing that. This could have been my first yellow, I suppose, but I really wanted to show you how you can kind of build these things up. Here, let's move this up. Now you can, I just said it's about tinting, not darkening. Well, you can make this darker with the ghost tints in, and we'll show you that soon enough here. Because what I'm going to start to do is we'll do some much more targeted stuff in these recesses. But I think you're going to see the difference as far as the glossiness versus the primer because, well, primer is primer. It's designed to be super matte and flat. So you're bound to have more of a difference there than, say, maybe the regular paint. But then you just you see what you put a dull coat over the top of it and, and you're good to go. All right, so we have used the two yellows here. Let's, let's look at our figure here. 
So I'm going to try and go a little bit darker. I'm going to grab, say, the brown. Let's see if I can find that. So there's my green. I'm going to set that aside. Fresh blood might be a little bit too... Oh, there's an orange too. Let's see. There we go. So this is ghost tint brown. Each of these jars is 30 mil. So yeah, look at the difference there. Now this, it's also a reddish brown. And to me, well, I, I enjoy working with the with the primers too, but after playing around with that Angelique bust last year, that's where I really started to enjoy this kind of a thing. So once again, I'm gonna point this down. Now we're gonna be a little more targeted here. Watch what happens. See what we just did in there. So you can go back into your recesses a little bit. Now it may require kind of a, a certain approach with your, your angle there. Oh, good, you can see the shoulder. I'm gonna try and get a light down here. And this is really gonna get some down here. So look at how we've changed that. So take a good look at that. I'm swinging around. And you see it, it's not like there's no color there, but we don't have the same kind of depth that we've got here. So I'm going to pop some down here. All right, to me, this is just so much fun. I haven't actually turned down the PSI yet. Eventually I'll get to it, maybe. <laughs> I just kind of forgot. Now look what I'm doing here. Can you see that? Good, good. The brush is not in, the, in your way. This is where, see how it's darkening it down there now? Here, I'll spin this around. I better remember to bring this turntable to Gen Con. <laughs> Come to think of it. Oh, look at that. That is not just the an artifact of the lights. Here, I'm actually going to lift this up here. and That is actually, that is the, the ghost tint right there, creating some shadows. Now, see, look at this. We're going to go the other way. I'm going to get some more of my... Is this the brown? Yes. Oh, gosh. I think... Well, I'll be doing it at ReaperCon. I don't know if I'll be able to, to film a video uh, before ReaperCon. The Clockwork Dragon, where I took the ghost tints and basically did like a spacecape on it and did all the metal smith stuff all right here i'm gonna put this over on its side you can't quite see what's happening here but sorry i had to just gotta change my angle here and the only way to do that is i'm physically picking this up and moving it sorry yeah this is completely it's just changing right in front of our eyes And let's say there's some things you're not, just not comfortable doing with an airbrush. Well, you can use a regular brush, too. There's nothing that says you can't. I know, sometimes the light just is not at the, quite the right angle. I'm going to do another. As you can see, I'm kind of putting little stripes of darker color here. And I almost like the idea of the, the ends of these points being darker. Speaking of darker, see what I just did along the collar there? It's going to do it this way too. This really needs to just be more in shadow. There, same thing here. I'll put a little more of the brown out here. Ironically enough, this almost might be a little bit easier to paint at Gen Con because I will not be cramped in this tiny little booth here. Okay, I'm going to add, again, some more of the 
Right now, like I said, I could just mask it off with my hand or put something else there if I was worried about it. You know, getting some of the overspray. Uh, overspray is a thing you do have to deal with. There are, <laughs> everybody seems to kind of have their own way of doing that. All right, well, this has really tran been transformed from what it was. Oh gosh, this is it's basically 15 minutes with this stuff. That's all. And we've got a lot more shading now. Depth of color. Let's let's do something with the eyes here now. I'm gonna move this up even more. Tilt this back. Yeah, let's get this even higher. There. My goal is. I think you can see what we're doing. Look what we just did here. Around the eyes. Makes it a little darker. So you can see the difference between that one. This one might be... Yeah, you'll probably see this one a little easier. You'll see it easier. It's actually harder for me to reach. So now... Let's take a look at the lips on that so those also need to be yeah oh well, look at that that is just so little effort so much result see a couple of spritzes oh look we have we have lift off on the lips now what about the forehead I can see yeah, I can see in the in the foyer I also have to get some darks in here. Now I've got the camera in just about the right space. See what we're doing here. I am gonna move this so that the brush doesn't block your view too much. And I'm still pretty much working at something like 50 PSI here. Have not reduced it at all yet. And this is your baseline Patria 105. I could, I've used the Sotars and, and what is that, the Chromes, right, and the other ones. They're, they're great too. There is just something about the, the ruggedness of this. Wow. Look at that. So we're going to take her down for a second. I'm going to get some of my other pieces. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go just straight to brown here. And I'm going to grab the big old cornucopia after I clean up my one hand there. <clears throat> and that thing is heavy. I think you can see it. And what are we going to do? We're going to get some tinting, some shading down into that crevice. I think you can, it's it's right there, the camera's right on it. Look at that. Can I go over this again with a brush and be more precise and do uh, basically, you know, the little highlight edges on that? I sure can. And I'll I'll show you that. Little, little brief clips of that too, just so you can see how that worked out. You don't need me to see me highlighting every single one of those. Believe me, it'll it'll take hours to do that. All right, I'm gonna get some more of this. Yeah, that's the ghost tint brown. I may go over it with yellow too, but for right now, this is. Well, it's important. I'm also going to probably hit it with like, something like the oil discharge to also darken it down a little more because we have lots of middle tones and some lights but we don't really have here as a good strong dark that's, that's what we're starting to add in here a little bit. All right, I'm going to set this aside here. Go one last little dose of the brown here, and we are going to hit the 
Oh gosh, whatever those little things are that go on the side of her face. Whatever these things are. See, now I'm going to shoot in the opposite direction. So now we're getting some, some more dark in there. So we shot this way to get the, the light going this way. Now we're shooting this way to do the opposite. Let's do the other one here. So again, shooting in the opposite direction. Now, do I have the oil discharged somewhere? That's blue, midnight blue, plasma fluid, purple. Ah, what the heck? I'm going to grab her, put her back out here. Actually, I'm going to throw a little bit of the purple on there and see, see what happens. So, purple. Is it a new bottle? Nope, I don't think it's a new bottle either. Now, this should give us some nice darks. Yep. Ah, oh, okay. Where are we at? Trying to get to the top of the head here. And you will see that start to darken a bit. That's the purple. It's, it's slight. That's why it's called a ghost tint. Instead of ghost or instead of a massive blocking overspray color. <laughs> it's just that's it's intended to do just this, give you a slight little tint to things. So you can see it makes it slightly darker, but it also now it starts to take it off of all completely reddish brown. It starts to add yet another little color into the mix there. So I'm trying to get a little, little shot of darker color under there, even under the chin here, under the eyes. You can see the angle that I'm using. I'm going to spray some of this on the lips too, so they are now a little bit darker. Let's get a little dark down in here. camera down not that down far down just sprayed right in here looks like I need a little more that's the green and I can actually I can mix the green and the purple together we'll see what that gives us it should give me sort of a dark there we go and I'm gonna do is lean this this away yeah, so see, it's, it's also, it's making that darker, but also gives me another, another little bit of color in there. There we are. Oh, let's get to the back. We know we need some dark back here. We know we need dark in these areas. So it's, it's doing a couple different things. It's adding some shading. Yeah, I can even go where those joints come in. I can always go lighter too. If I feel like, oh, you know, I killed too much of the light there. Well, what's to stop me from just taking some lighter color and going right back in there again? Uh, pretty much nothing. Here we are. Is this the... Yeah, I'm going to go a few more areas of the purple. I am going to see what happens when the purple and green mix together. Because that's the other thing, too, is you can mix these things together. You don't have to use just purple or just green. See what we just added there. Okay, we need. So I just I went right through there, added that little. Let's see if we can add another one over the right here. 
I just want a little shadow in this area because you got that the cornucopia sitting on top of all this it needs to be maybe a little little darker uh, yeah this definitely needs a little bit of shadow there so it gives it a shadow and changes the color let's do something like that here too so I'm gonna move this up and if I've got any purple left, the idea is get a little separation right there. Okay. Now there is, because this stuff is got a, it has some glossy properties to it, there's going to be a little glare from the lights. And I apologize about that. There's kind of nothing I can do about that. And it's just the ghost tints giveth and taketh away. As you can see we're just starting to add more and more of these. It's not just a darker area, it's we're, we're shifting the color. And really that's what that's kind of what glazes are for really is not so much just darkening things but shifting that color around. So I'm going to move this down again so you can see what we've got going on down here. Now I am, for the heck of it, I'm going to take the ghost tint purple. That's this. And where's my green? Because purple and green, if they're dark enough, actually make sort of a black. So I just I put those two together and I'm just going to shift it around in, the, in your cup there. Oh yeah. That's uh, here. I'm gonna spray it on on this first. So see, we've got a bit of a greenish tint to it now, but it's certainly darker. Here, let's let's hit this spot. I'm gonna just get some areas up here where I want it to be a little darker okay I'm going to get that a little darker let's get some more shadows into here you can see the approach going up like this Now we're really starting to give this a nice yeah, depth of field. We went from just a whole array of middle tones to something much deeper, much more interesting. And I'm trying to do minimal stuff with masking and all that. I, I, I just figured that's why I have brushes. You know, I'll do what I can with this stuff. And then when it ceases to be convenient to do it with this, that's when the brushes are going to come out. So again, we, we just darken that down over there. I'm, I'm adding some, some darks here. Now my next, for my next trick, that's I'm going to maybe go back in with some of the regular paints, potentially regular paints mixed with ghost tints, because you can mix ghost tints with ghost tints, but hey, you can also mix regular paint with ghost tints. You can do that. Believe me. All right. I'm going to spin her out one last time. Move her back a bit. There we go. So that is, that's the power of the ghost tints right there. What I want to do in the next, next little stage here, is see how we've got that bluish green color around the eyes. Let's see if I can add that with the airbrush. If not, see here, 
So what we were, this is kind of the final stage. I originally painted this with oils, and these you can see were brushed down highlights. I'm going to see how much of this I can add with the airbrush. Yeah, so that's the next thing. We're going to give that a shot and see what happens. I've got a couple of greens here. Oh, this is the boring green and lurking moss. I want to see what happens when I try and work these in. And like I said, the idea is they're, they're going to work these in kind of on the shoulders here and around the eyes. I may, if they're not quite the right color, I may tint these with the ghost tints. Like I was telling you, you mix these with the, so that's the, that's the green that we've got there that is going to be on the lighter side. Let's see what happens. What's f interesting is I could take this, if I had, say, that yellow ghost tint to it, we'd have kind of a really intense yellowish green. So I'm just going to add this in, and we will see, let's see what we get here. All right, that's it's a nice green. You know, just it's a really nice green. Let's see what happens when we add it again to some parts of the face here. So we're just gonna gently. Oh yeah, that's that's really nice. See what we just did there, right on that eye. Don't care about the eye. Not gonna bother masking off because I am painting the eye. Why not? Why not? Let's get a little bit of this onto the rest of the face there and as I spin this around so you can see what the difference with that little bit of it's just the slightest touch of color there and this is something that the airbrush does pretty well this is the idea of building the layers of color we start with the primer then we did the tints we started going darker now we can go back a little lighter some mid-tones I'm going to work here. This is on the forehead. I think you can see. Oh, yeah. This is working out really nice. So we're, we're playing off the ghost tints that are already there. Now we're going to... There. So I just added a little touch of it right there. This is one color. That's all it is. I'm going to add some of it right in here. Look at that. What that just did. So it, it really does provide a little, see we, we built up the dark, just like we built up the lighter primer so that we could go over it with the ghost tints. Then in these areas that were darker, I purposely made them a little more darker so that when I add this, now I get a whole different type of shading. Ooh, let's see, let's see, let's get, uh, can you see that? Sorry if my hand is blocking you, oh yeah right down here so all of my darks stay behind I'm going to turn this around here to get this other shoulder in. It's, looks like the camera's pointed right where you can see it and there we go it's just a couple of spritzes it's all it takes oh what is it less is more right well that it happens in weathering on vehicles and it also can happen with airbrushing too sometimes a little less can end up being a lot more and I'm gonna also on the, yeah, on the other side of these here I'm gonna just I got a few spritzes of paint that's all it is it is a tiny bit of this this is a uh, sort of like the seafoam green color that I like to use so much on my miniatures yeah just I'm just going a little spray down the top here can see there's just there's less and less look at that so I hit it from here oh, get that up a little more so I, I sprayed this way and look at the green left behind but now it's green we got the orange and brown here still so with some of the original stuff left behind this is where the angle of attack really starts to matter look at that now these things which just don't have a lot going on well we're gonna add a little more to them now we're gonna give those a little more interest something on the collar there hopefully not spin that right into my booth 
So I, I do apologize for any kind of, again, you know, where it goes off camera or this, you know, trying to hear over this, the compressor or whatever. It's, this is the first time trying this, so I had no idea how it was going to work out. I have not been able to get some of the other, like the new machine. <laughs> it's just going to have to wait till after ReaperCon. See, look at that. Speed right down there. And if this gets too late, well, I can hit it with ghost hints. Either mixing in the container or going over the top. You know, I do have this darker green, and we'll we'll use that too for some of the shadow areas also. And I need to need to get a little of this in here too, and then I gotta actually hit it again with some yellow. So see, we're doing almost a little bit of reflected light, and this is a cool green here, and that's more of that yellowish green on the top. Now these little areas over that depression do that. Yeah, that works out pretty nicely. Now I'm going to take this down. I'm going to grab some of my other small pieces, and we'll work with those too. Here, I'm just going to get this out of the way. And where's my my little whatever these things are? I see I'm out of my green here. I'm going to put a little more in. It's actually a lot of this on the corn or the. Uh, cornucopia so look at what we're going to do here get this on camera for you to see uh, but the idea is I'm going to try and get a line of this green right down here can you see it so see what we just did we just added a line of green down there so look at this we got a yellowish green then the brown and then that cooler green <laughs> ironically enough called boring green we're adding interest with boring green. look at that cool to warm back to cool again uh, oh actually here it's gonna be tough to do all right that's on screen now let me get my controls here so I just turned it black and white so now you don't see anything now you can see the cool and the warm so like I said, we'll get this area a little more situated for future videos. I just, I wasn't even sure if this was practically possible at all, much less kind of the niceties of, well, you know, do I make, can I have the camera closer in or whatever? It was like, I don't even know if I can do this physically. Is the work area going to allow me to do that or the space that I have? So here again, cool, warm cool warm oh what the heck <laughs> when you hear me grunting it's because I just picked up a 12 pound piece of resin and see some of the greens that are in that we're going to try and get some of those greens here this is tricky because oh gosh that's heavy and I can see that my paint is about to run out here. So if you don't mind, I'm going to make sure I've got enough paint to do this. Because I don't want to have to refill this while i got that gargantuan chunk of resin in my hand. Okay. Now I thought I was going to be able to just paint this, say, vertically, straight up and down. And I thought, yay, that's great. Well, there were several things that were going to not let me that happen. First of all, it was too tall for the booth. Second of all, the screen is not oriented vertically. It's oriented horizontally. So you would have seen a tiny portion of it at a time instead of this, where you get to see a whole big swath of it at once. So I hope it was worth the, the wait to see something like that. Like I said, all of the individual little darks or lights that I can add in there. I'm just going to do that with a brush. Because why not do do what works best with one tool and vice versa with the other tools. That's why they are tools. So a hammers are used for nails and screwdrivers are used for screws. Well, 
there's been times where I've had to modify that back in the old construction days. Sometimes you just yeah, don't have a screwdriver. All of a sudden, a hammer <laughs> becomes a screwdriver. Okay, what are we going to do here? We're going to and add a little more of this one of this green just slightly here ever so slightly along the tops spin this around boom now you can see it there there we go let's try we're just we it's the last of that let's Let's just put this lurking moss in the brush, see what comes out. You just don't know till you try. It is significantly darker though. And see it compared to the other green in the cup there. And yeah, you know, this whole time I haven't had this below 50 PSI or 45 or whatever it is. Now we're gonna add some dark green here on the lower sides of these. A little try not to cover that up for you. So I'm gonna try and do one of those little stripes of green here, another little stripe of green there. So we're all the while we're darkening some of these areas, adding a little more interest. Okay, I'm gonna raise this up. Let's see if I can't get a little more. That's ah, better. Trying to get some darks under here. And this is this dark green. There we are. There. I'm gonna shoot some of that up into here. And now on the undersides of these eyes. It's all about that angle like I talked about before. And as always, yeah, I was going to paint one of these uh, in oils. Could have done that too. Now I know from my my speaking of oils, the one that I painted in oils, this was actually sort of a dark green. I move this down. Okay, kind of fighting uphill a little bit here. That's what I'm looking for. That's about what I wanted. So now the nose, a little more shape to it. see got that face right next to it there so the, the nose was almost darker than the, the skin down here that's that's that does it pretty well here let's raise this up a touch and get some of this dark green into here I know I did some of that on the previous bust I'm not trying to match the other one exactly uh, just see what's possible with the airbrush here. All right, I'm gonna make some of this darker. Like I said, I could mix some of this with the ghost tints as well to make it even more intense and dark. The, the, it's really up to you. you. You saw what the the one on the website was. It was all. It was super shiny. There was a lot of reds in it. This is obviously clearly a different interpretation. The Angelique was a different interpretation. I mean, if, if you're showing out the money for it, you certainly get to paint it however you please. All right, let's let's get a little bit of the. Oh, we need to hit this side too. Oops, yeah. There's a little of the dark under there. It's sort of some of this is playing off of some of the purple that was added before. Yeah. So sometimes, and I know I don't do this often enough, see, I just put a little of the brush cleaner I you can substitute rubbing alcohol so if you feel like it's not uh, doing quite what it should be doing I'm just gonna run a little bit of again rubbing alcohol through that 
spin this back around here. I can say that the we went from super thin paint, really intense, really bright, and the ghost tints to a paint that was much thicker. Even the primer is thinner than this paint. So you have to consider you just you have a little less time in the brush before it starts to kind of coagulate in there. I know there's people that furiously clean their airbrush in between every single color. You can see we didn't do that here. I don't do that with my regular brushes. I'm certainly not going to do it with this tool. All right. There, I just felt like I needed to clean that out a little bit. I'm going to take this away, see if we add some of that darker green to our cornucopia. And yes, I'm going to make a grunting sound again as I pick this monstrous thing up. Boom. You can see it's definitely got a little more shading each time. All right, let's see where we can add some of this, what is it called, lurking moss. There we go. I'm going to just leave that on the, <laughs> I'll leave that sit on here. And we're just going to, I'm going to get some darker green on the ends. That's what I'm looking to do here, just on this part. Again, this is some of the modifications that I'm making from the last time around. It's just, it's practical concerns here. So that works out fairly nicely. But, there's something else. I'm going to bring out the other one again, just to look at it. So there's some of that lighter yellowish color that's in there. So I'm going to see if I can't find some kind of yellowish color that works to create that same sort of effect. Now, I have to spin this over just to get some of this. There we go. I tell you, painting the other one in oils made this part really easy. All right, we'll get the rest out of that. Finding a yellow. I don't really have an ideal yellow, although, what is this bio right here? I might just give this a try. What do we have to do? I do have this yellow too. Well, it's irradiated yellow, but the bio's got a little bit of green in it. So I am going to use it and I'm going to see what happens. That's awful thick. What I'm going to do is actually mix a little bit of the yellow ghost tint with it. So it'll sort of by default thin it down. So mixing those together. Wow, okay. This should be interesting. See what we got here. This ought to be really interesting. I have no idea what's going to happen. It's certainly going to be a little more translucent. Ah, oh yeah. Oh, look at that. That's nice. That, uh, that's kind of what I was hoping I would see, actually. Yeah. Who would have thought it? And you know how I did that oblique approach, like doing this to pick up the higher raised areas? It's a really shallow line of attack. Now maybe I'll just go... Well, let's do a little more of that. Another application. I'm going to see if I can... I don't know if that's going to go through the brush by itself. It's just so thick. Well, I guess it will. Here we're going to find out. It sort of does. There we are. So sorry again if my hand gets in the way. I am going to add some of this to the to the face because whether it's airbrushing or regular brushing if the color goes somewhere it's got to go everywhere so I'm just going to set that down put this in there I think I'm actually going to go back and add some of this in just to thin it down make it flow a little more here so you can see 
and this also makes people cry when I do this but been doing this for years and this brush has certainly seen its share of action so here she's back right there Move this up a little bit alright and I'm gonna hit some of going right here adding some lights to the the cheek the forehead but it's gonna be on the translucent side because we put that ghost tint in there all right that is good that's what I was hoping would happen yeah gives it a little extra touch of intensity good what I was looking for yeah I mean, this well because of the ghost hits and everything this really has some nice color intensity to it and I, I guess you know a little more maybe than the oil painted version but that was the first time I even thought about painting something like that you know now I've done that one I got a little more a little more experience with it and what we'll what we're also going to do is we'll say you know what we've done as much at least for now as much as we can with the airbrush so what I'll do on the next stage is we'll we'll just get close in here we'll paint the eyes right paint those and a couple of other areas we'll do we'll do some brush work and then we'll go in we'll do like a final details sort of a thing where we just we highlight a few things you know we add maybe some dark lining in here because again why do that with an airbrush when it's so much easier with a brush so that's what we're going to do next we're going to paint her eyes and her mouth and we're just going to go for some certain details because the video is already getting long enough we don't need this to be five hours long because it's going to be a while with the, with the brush here so we'll be right back with uh, some old-fashioned brush work at this point we're ready to brush in some of the details on the face especially the eyes See if I can get my here right in there. Obviously the orange in the eyes, but we've got some darks, some outlining, some highlights here on the edges, these sort of things. Well, that's the kind of stuff that's just easier to add with a brush, at least for me. Again, it's that the tool that makes it easier to do a certain job. So what we'll do is we're gonna be adding a combination of highlights, some orange to the eyes, and then even see the the spots on the face we're gonna add those too and we've got just a, the usual sort of collection of your secret weapon here we're gonna be using some of the liner paints brown liner blue liner green liner obviously for some of the darker things we've got some red and some orange out there too and we'll be using for the most part our number eight round craft brushes now I'm just gonna start in here now <laughs> we'll see just how stable this is it's probably going to want to shift around a bit so again it's just for me instead of masking all this stuff off I could have done that but I gotta say that even with this weird angle like this still to me easier to deal with It would be different, I guess, if I didn't want all of that that additional texture in there, or I, I want the, the, the dots and other markings and such. Then, because if you do it with the airbrush, again, unless you're masking that stuff off, it's just going to end up looking a lot, a lot more fuzzy than I wanted. I wanted some more, say, crisp details on that. And this, we're just doing an initial layer here and I'm trying to translate obviously that that much smaller bust to something bigger the the parts are definitely sculpted a little bit different so while 
that just dries there. Let's look for some other things that we can do here on the face. So let's let's do some of the maybe some of these little edge highlights. See what we can see what we can come up with here. So again, as that dries, I'm gonna have to shift my lights out of the way here a bit. But again, this just easier to do with a brush. A couple of brush strokes and it's done. No fuss, no muss, no worrying about masking things off or an airbrush that might sp spritz or something like that. It's just, you know what? How hard was that? Uh, to, to me, it's just easier doing it that way. So I think I got this pretty well centered. Now I could add the, the dark in there too. I can use the liner paints. Maybe we'll do that too. But at least for now, I'm just picking up these edges with a brush. Did the same thing on the Angelique bust. And we're doing that here. I'm just gonna looking for all of these vertical surfaces here. So that really helps make a difference there. Now let's do these things over the eyes. It seems like you have a pretty decent view. Again, easier for me. What the heck. Just do this with a brush. It's a few brush strokes. It means less cleaning of the airbrush. Just for all intents and purposes, I'm saving time, saving energy. And I have complete control because it's it's the brushes. I know what the brush is going to do. I could have used just the same airbrush paint. I didn't have to go in with, say, the secret weapon paints. I could have just used, like I just said, the same colors that I had worked with, but I just, to me, I prefer brush painting with stuff like the Reaper paint, Secret Weapon, GW paints, whatever. Uh, to me, I just, I prefer the, now I do prefer the Badger paints for airbrushing. I've, I've tried using other paints in the airbrush, and to me, that just doesn't work as well. Now you can see a huge difference right there. I mean, it's what, it's a few minutes, it's a couple of brush strokes, and it's already made quite the difference. Now I did find the oil discharge, and it's essentially a, a really dark brown. That's one of those ghost tints that I was telling you about. And what I did was I turned this thing upside down. I put in the in some of these areas under the eyes. I did a little bit of additional darks there. It was something you couldn't have seen anyway the way I was holding this thing. I, I virtually had it upside down and my elbow would have been where the screen was. So you weren't going to see a whole lot of that anyway. And all, all it was was just strengthening a few darks. Nothing, nothing tremendous there. So what I'm going to try and do here is get myself a little different color green good that's right there and see I'm just after this edge right here see I've matched matched the color that I had there that was the bile yeah I think it was the bile mixed with one of the greens so a little touch of ghost tint in there to get it a little even more transparent so see what just finding these few little things now on the upper lip here I want to get touch more of a highlight maybe even have that trend towards a little bit more of a yellow also now the lips those have a little bit more of a reddish color to them again I could have done it with the airbrush but what the heck I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way here oh sorry about that I'm going to lower I'm going to lower the camera a bit. And I know I've said this many times already on the video. This is a whole new thing. 
this is a big experiment. I really didn't know how this was going to work out. I mean, to me, for something gigantic like this, I've been talking for months about how I'm, I've been trying to set up a much larger filming area. Well, this is it. You're seeing it. Well, basically the first test of what I could cobble together. Now eventually, as maybe more of these type of projects come along, I can try and get some more equipment. Yeah, see how we just... That really starts to stand out a bit more. So hopefully it's going to stay in place. And now we're going to try and do some additional light colors on the eyes here. Now, hopefully that reference picture... Yeah, let's get her back in her original spot. That reference picture on the right, see that's a little bit bigger. That is sort of for you guys to help maybe make it a little bit easier to see what it is that I'm trying to do. Me, I'm actually looking at the original bust because, like I said, that's, that screen is a long ways away from me. I cannot see it. So I'm taking some of my original yellowish color, added a little bit of an off-white to it. And we're going to just lighten this up. It does not have to be any kind of perfect shading or whatever because we're going to go in and we're adding some of that bloodshot eye stuff which hey we have the fresh blood ghost tint which we've used for blood effects so maybe we'll use that you know well it's what I used on the original eyes on that little but I don't know actually that was with the oils there but it's it's what I've been using oh my gosh for a few months now for blood effects mixing that with a few other colors. Alright, now I am going to also take this, I'm going to get a little bit of a, a green into that too. And I'm going to try and step up this, highlight a touch more, just a little bit more. And then we can go in with our sort of a burnt sienna type color on the lips there. Now, I just want to look at my... Yeah, okay, so we do... So I had some light dots and some darker dots. Let's... Well, again, we wait for that other stuff to dry. I am going to see if I can put in a few lighter dots. Now, it's going to be trickier because, well, it's just, this is bigger. <laughs> and on the, the smaller bust, I could just sort of indicate a few little dots. And, yeah, it was enough. Here, it's a little different story. I have to be a little more judicious in how I create this pattern here. So what I'm trying to do is have a few larger dots and then build off of that basically a series of kind of smaller dots and more frequent dots. Trying to vary the size and shape of each one. You see how they start to get a little bit smaller as they work their way out from that sort of main larger one. And these aren't really supposed to be super noticeable. They're there. We did some up here too. And again, I'll try to sneak the camera over here a bit. And we'll do a few again of these larger ones. And then build away from that. Here, just work our way up. Let's do some on this side now, too. The one thing you're going to notice when you, if you do something like this, 
and as it's inevitable there's really nothing you can do about it you there'll be a textural difference than that you can see a brush stroke here and the airbrush stuff is just super silky smooth there's just it's a whole bunch of tiny dots we are not obviously now painting with a whole bunch of tiny dots we're we're making large dots which in comparison to the airbrush dots are colossal in size all right now oh, let's go yeah let's go another step lighter on the eyes here as I can because that's where I want my deepest dark to go. That'll probably be red liner in there, maybe some brown liner too. Okay, so that boy that really just starts to stand out. Now again, I'm looking at mine. There's going to be a lot of glazes over that and even some blood veins drawn in there. Now the lips. Let's do something on those. We're going to make ourselves essentially a reddish brown here. Sorry, I can't really show you the palette. It's the palette cam that would have been a major challenge to set up so maybe in the future we'll do that but for now you can see we got this transparent transparent paint going there might even put a touch of brown liner in there at this point yeah it knocks it down a little bit is that on screen yeah that's on screen so this it's gonna be a little awkward for me here on the upper lip surface I'm gonna go even more with my brown liner here because I'm just gonna have to gonna have to build this up in a get more of the old-fashioned way just because of how my handhold is I'm gonna try and work a little more light in there for you all right And then I can, you know, now that that's in place, start to add a little more here. So all the while I was working on, from the primer on up, in the back of my mind, I knew this stage was coming. And I said, yeah, what's the best way to set this up? It, it's not unlike the primer stage sets up the ghost tint stage and on and on and on. Now, I also don't have my magnifier light here. So this is, I'm sort of doing this a little bit half blind compared to what I am used to. So I'm taking brown liner, clear red, and we are going to reinforce this edge. And you just that's not what the airbrush is designed for reinforcing sharp edges unless you mask it and get what's the point of masking something that you're just gonna paint over anyways so let's see I'm just gonna get my dark in here and if I go over some of the lighter color I just did it doesn't matter I'm just looking to cover that up now I've got myself some dark green here that I'm going to try and get on the underside of the eyes here without snapping some pieces off. There we go. On here too. And do the same thing over here. maybe even down in here hopefully you can see that and I'll go back in with some lighter stuff too but I need to really get down in there that's it I need just a little more contrast now I need my darker dots in that same area 
And I said I gotta, actually I got to do more of the dots. I, I did too many large ones. Just looking at my original reference there. I'm also going to reinforce this edge here. So I'm going to take the brush, one long sweep across like that. Nostrils, we'll make those darker and now let's get in here start to add some of these darker spots they'll be interspersed with the lighter ones and who knows maybe if I want to soften some of them I take the airbrush and I do a little spritz on these and it softens the edges or something Maybe I, well, I take another look at it and I say, you know what, yeah, okay, the edges are too hard. I want to soften those up. What's interesting, though, is how between adding some of the other colors that we've added to this, remember how glossy this was looking during the, during our ghost tint phase, and all of a sudden it's just not quite so glossy anymore. It's because we, we've done regular paint over the top of it. We've added ghost tint and regular paint together. Alright. Now let's get some of these over the top of the eye. Now I'm going to lighten this up slightly. It's not really going to maybe look all that much lighter, but it is We'll do some of these over here. And by making those a little bit lighter now, as they go into this part of the, the head, not quite so noticeable anymore. Now here I got two of the brighter dots. Don't really want two of them right there. So I wish I could move this around a little bit, but it's sort of locked in place. Like I said, there's probably going to be other details that I'm just going to have to paint in off camera. I'm going to darken up this, this line here. go back in with my lighter colors. Sometimes it's just easier to get the dark stuff down. I just, first I didn't think I needed to do this. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put that darker line in there. And then I'll go back lighter colors again and there just real quick fix that up let us do some lighter, lighter stuff on the lips here mostly focusing on the Lower lip, we will do some, I think, on the upper lip here. Like there. I think it actually needs to be a little darker. Yeah. Now I think I even used some reddish dots in other places. Now again, the the face on the other one is, is really, really, really modeled. What I'm going to do is mix in a slightly. Uh, there we go. So instead of doing, again, this with the airbrush, I'm trying to give these a little bit of depth just by adding a a lighter color on the inside. Can 
you see, yeah, I think you can see this this up here. And like I said, it's also really it's toasty down here. It must be at least eighty something degrees, and that's inside. Because again, this this is not my normal filming area where the air conditioning is. So we're adding a few brighter lights there. Let's go back into here. Brighten this up. A little more. All of this is in advance of some of the final things that we want to do on the on the eyes. You know, everywhere else I'm obviously going to be doing some the same sort of cleanup work, but I, it's not really going to be that much value for you for the time spent watching it. I think this is a little more important. There. All right, so we've got we've got that pretty well settled. Now let let me see. Yeah, we got her with her eyes here. I'm going to grab some of that ghost tint. So I'm going to set her back here a little bit. Make sure she doesn't fall over. Where is my fresh blood? Nope, that's magenta. That is orange. There we go. Fresh blood. Like so. I'm going to put a little bit of this out onto the palette and then we'll mix that a little bit of the red as well here a little more of the ghost tint and yeah I'm gonna actually I'm gonna move this a little closer so that I can see it and this is specially focused in down into the corners of the eyes the idea is that it's relatively translucent. I am also going to have my orange on hand. We'll do a little bit of wet blending here. And what I'm going to do in the final details thing, I am going to take some hard coat, something that's glossy. Now, what you could do is do multiple layers of glossy color over the eyes. Do a layer of the glossy stuff, then paint over that, then do another layer of the glossy stuff, then paint over that. You'd be surprised at what you get when you do that. You'd be really surprised. So look at the difference that makes. That is not too shabby, actually. Uh, I'd like to take a picture of that, but I just can't reach it. It is impossible to reach. Let's do that again on, on the other eye now. Let's see what we can do. So again, this is the fresh blood ghost tint mixed with our red and our orange. Now this side, I might end up with my hand in the camera view. I apologize for that. Get that in the corner here too. And then into my orange and maybe start to think see some of that kind of wet blending a little bit. And this is something that well, I just I couldn't have done this with the airbrush. I suppose I could have, I mean but just why why struggle with it? Why fight it? I had this discussion a few weeks ago with someone. They were doing an airbrush class and the idea was to do all of this stuff with the airbrush and he said, you know, for all the masking and everything else that I had to do in those areas, it just would have been easier to use a brush. Would have been easier to use a regular old brush. And that's that's why we're using that here now. 
the sweet thing is is I can keep going in with the yeah I, I got a few areas here let's see if I can slip that in no nope, there's just you need to see the pictures it's again it's kind of a bloodshot eyes sort of a thing that's going on and I'm gonna try and do that so this is just this is straight up ghost tint right now straight up ghost tint which means it's nice and translucent not really dark and it has a lot of orange to it so some of those same dots on the face they're in a way being repeated now in the eye and there's a few spots that I'm really going to I might add some regular paint to that fresh blood ghost tint actually I'm gonna take a touch of that put it on the lips there so we are taking some red brown liner and now a bit of the fresh blood ghost tint we are going to try and get some even more deeper in the corners especially especially in the corners so see how that's starting to look at that so all of that those lighter colors that we put in initially those with each permutation of this they stand out that much more A few more touches like so there we are now do I do I want to try and do some veins in the eyes I, I don't know I'm gonna grab a little smaller brush and I'll see what I can do this is just the, the ghost tints here just the ghost tints yeah oh yeah okay you see the, how that's working its way through the eye there so like I said in the final details section of this I'll take some of that gloss some kind of gloss coat whether it's a secret weapon stuff or games workshop art coat whatever it is and go over these eyes yeah that was that was good didn't mind putting those in there and it doesn't matter how glossy this stuff is because well I mean we want the eyes to be glossy anyways I'm gonna reinforce this so I mix the ghost tint in with my brown liner once again I'm just trying to secure a nice little edge here it's a lot thicker obviously than it was on the smaller sculpt so now again the skin really starts to recede and this is why we put that cooler green up here right because that it makes the warm the warm is going to stand out more once against the cooler color like that it's just bound to stand out more so let's get a oh this is another darker green. I don't want it to be too dark but I want to get a little more refinement here okay so I think what we'll do is we'll move away from the eyes. You got a pretty good view at that. We're gonna set this down, move our camera here. All right. Just trying to get that in position so you can see it. Let me see if I can move my reference picture here. 
not the scene there. That's better. Now you can see both of these. And let's get some darks and lights here. So I've got that darker green now. What we can do, just like we did on the face, we can start to maybe enhance a few of these lines. It's that's all. Now instead of going with the dark there, I'm gonna go with this lighter yellow here. And if it's too light, we knock it down. And again, sorry if my hand is in the way. I think you'll be able to see that easier here. There we go. That's that's all we're doing. We're just again adding a few brush strokes here and there. There will be a difference in texture. That's just you're using a regular brush with hair on it versus a brush that uses air. So you're going to have some differences. But if you if you know that's going to happen and you plan on it and and factor that in and then it's going to look like you intended it to be there. You know, there. Let's let's get in some darks here. Can you see? Yep, you can see what I'm doing. Look at that. It's just so much easier to paint these things in because why not? It just takes a few seconds, a few seconds with the brush, and like I said, no, no need to mask stuff. How, how are you really supposed to get the airbrush into those, these deep spots here? Just go ahead and use the brush. You know, there's all kinds of these little. Yeah, I can just do that, wipe it away. I can even water it down some more. Oh, look at this. I'm just going to slop it on here. You're thinking, what in the world's going on? Bang. There. You now we, we save ourselves a lot of time. A lot less screwing around. I just, I, I'm trying to make this project a little bit easier, a little less daunting for you. Like I said, you spend as much time as you want refining it. I could spend 20 hours on this thing easily, but that's not really the goal. The goal was just to give you some basic ideas how to use the airbrush on this, how to use the primers. Yes, and just kind of bang. Quick old brush stroke there, and I can always go back over it again with the airbrush. It's it's as no big deal. It is not a problem. All right, so the lips there. I'm just I'm off camera, putting a little bit of this dark green on the upper lips there. All right. I'm just going to try and move her. I'm just getting rid of some of this foam here that was used as a little bit of a cushion. Because we've got these guys. Where's my brush? And. All right, I think you can see what I'm about to do here is just you know, start to add in some dark. Now, it's easier for me to do these down here. So what I'm going to do, the ones on the top, I'm actually just going to hold this upside down and do on those top ones what I'm doing here on the bottom. And if that's too green, I just, you know, add some red or some brown or whatever. 
and in no time at all we get a lot more contrast in here again I can wipe that away now let's do a little more a little more and I'm just gonna do this on all the rest of these guys I really don't need to see me doing that but you get the idea there's gonna be some other outlines and whatever that I reinforce maybe some of the things I highlight but in general you see what's gonna happen over the next well however long it takes so I'll be right back with those final details do that glossy stuff on the eyes and we'll kind of finalize this whole project right here we'll be right back we're back once again and you can see we have our tentacle ears added on both sides looks a little bit <clears throat> actually looks really different with those in there now with these remember I was saying I could knock those down with some airbrush over the top I just took the ghost tints and went over the top mixed it with a little bit of my paint so the spots are still there but now they're just not as pronounced and I just grabbed some of this it's just some art coat I know the lights are kind of burning out the label a little bit it's not really anything fancy here what we are going to do is take some of this hopefully not knock over the jar as I have her in my hand here I try and put this where you can see it I think that's about right and I am going to put this stuff over the top maybe a couple of coats and remember I was talking about painting maybe some other colors in between layers kind of sandwiching in in between layers that's not a it's not a bad plan I've done it on smaller things and it kind of worked so imagine on some that's a half size bus like this what that might do now the other thing too is it's going to equalize everything's going to be glossy now because what I had going on here was some parts were glossy and some parts were semi-glossy so now they'll just be all glossy all the time and I may as I said put on a few layers and now because we didn't do everything else doesn't have that glossiness on it then it's only a little like semi I guess you would say from the ghost tints those will have even more dramatic effect now let's do some more stuff here because we have not put any really really light colors on here yet and like I said I'm just kind of doing this very quick and slapdash compared to what I would just be doing in the in the studio so to speak if I didn't have to hold this in my hand and point it towards the camera so see we lighten that up a little bit right here I'm gonna try and here let's get this a little bit more wetted down even impart a little bit of texture right here like I said I could be at this for four or five times as long as we've spent filming this part of the video however I'm fairly certain you don't want to see me spend five or six more hours just doing this and it would take a it would take forever to load onto YouTube as well so none of those things are going to happen what is going to happen though is I'm going to add some more lights down here all right here we go boy this thing weighs a ton it's really good exercise you know instead of, instead of curling I'm curling a half size bust now look at look at the difference so we got this here versus this over here now that's be tricky not quite sure I can turn this around so you I guess you can see it and we're just trying to add this lightest layer here so I'm going to even add some wipe it away here let's there we go I think that's oriented a little better for you now like I said I can just real soft here get in a few of these lines and over here 
this just got a little weird. So I'm changing, I'm making another one of these adjustments that I talk about all the time. Yeah, I like that a little better. I can just take my finger again and tone it down. So you can see we're just, we're trying to orientate a bunch of highlights kind of door. Not putting a lot over here. We'll put some maybe over there. Here, let's try to orient this where you can see it. I believe you can. You know, even on these, on our crazy things, we can, ah, that's going to be, I think it's going to be way too light if I do that. So here we are. See that? Not all the way around, just right there. Just a few points, and that's it. Just leave it just a couple. Now, over here, I'm going to raise up the camera. And let's see if we can't. Put a few more things in here, and all the while I'm just I'm waiting for that. I almost called it glue, the art coat to dry a little bit. So I'm gonna, yeah, uh, I think hopefully that shows up on camera, because even that first coat right there, that's doing some real nice things for it. So I'm just turning this around. Because we're going to try and do that same trick here that we did on the other ear tentacles. And just that much provides a lot of separation there. Now, can I even... Ah, good. I think you can see this. Boy, this looks so light. It's barely a middle tone that I'm adding on there. It's, it speaks to how much dark we've got here, and that's that's a good thing. You must have dark to show light. And speaking of which, I have kind of a weird light there that got a little out of control. <clears throat> Let's. And we also have, <clears throat> sorry, we have a little bit of the gloss that basically I can hide by just putting my regular paint over the top of it. And I'm going to show you this stuff here. We're going to again take the camera down and brush right here. So we did a few a few little lights there. You know, you could go over the tops of these guys real quick. I'm also going to grab the cornucopia, which again, most of you probably would refer to as a carapace. Here we go. What we did can see we took some of the, again the oil discharge and darkened some things down we went back over it with some lighter colors and while we got the brush while we got some lighter colors let's see what we can add here and these areas where the paint was scraped away well now they're gone not gonna see them just using the side of the brush here I'm going to focus on, this is the top surface here, so definitely going to restrict these type of, I don't know if you want to call them highlights or whatever, I guess you can call them just highlights. I'm going to keep this only on this top surface here. Now, what I will do is I, I can't glue this in, actually. I will have to 
See if I can't just blue tack this sucker in there and hope that it holds long enough for some photography for you guys. Because this has to actually make its way to Gen Con and then to Minnesota after that. Because this is going to be... This is for George. Again, that's Blackheart Models. So we're just adding, again, real simple. Yeah, I could take the brush and go down in here uh, with all of those dark crevices in there. If it was, if it was me, like I said, my first instinct was to paint this with oils. I, th I thought it would have been a real blast. The small one was a blast to paint in oils. This would have been really fun. But then when I realized that I was going to be I needed something of large scale like this to paint in the Gen Con booth. Well, this was a, a natural choice. And I said, okay, we'll turn it into a lesson. And boy, what a lesson it was. Just to give you an idea of what would that look like. Here, let's take some of our... Let's get some darker stuff going here and oh how about right here like this if you wonder what I was talking about that's all just a couple of these lines Sorry, I think the microphone got shut off for a second there. Hopefully it's back on. I can't tell, of course. So if there's a little notation on screen saying, sorry guys, the mic was turned off, well, you'll know what happened. It's, it's just, again, it's really simple. It's just a few quick strokes of the brush. And I'm only going to do it just in areas where I really think it needs it. And again, I can wipe away what's too much and what stays behind is the dark. It's the nice thing about the large craft brushes. They hold a lot of paint. And they have that sort of soft bristle. There we are. See? I mean, it just a, doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a a super hard task. I switch this over this way so I can do the same thing here. Yeah, the, the mic was actually getting caught on part of the table. I would love to have... Oh, what would you have? A Bluetooth version of that, but those I haven't had a lot of success with. I tried, even when I was doing battle reports, to use a, a Bluetooth, and yeah, that just... It sounded horrible. And, well, that's when I could get it to work <laughs> at all. all right, I think that pretty well, that, so that shows you what we did here, just to finalize this huge section of this bust. And it weighs... I don't want to say as much as the main part of the bus, but it's pretty close. Pretty close. So I'll just do this here. Now, a couple of reasons I, I wear the gloves. Part of it has to do actually with the what what shows up on screen. But in this case where I've got to handle this so much. The gloves are real important because you will get, I mean, your hands are greasy and you're going to get that grease, whatever it is, that residue onto your, on your figure, onto your bust, and the 
paint is either not going to adhere or it's just going to come off. Either of those things is bad, so we don't want those. We don't want the bad things. And you can see all of those areas where the paint was scraped away. We have put paint back on there again. And it is no longer an issue. Not an issue anymore. So what I'm going to do is piece this together. I'll either take some photo well I'll try to take some photos and then I'll see if I can't have this thing rotate around. My guess is that this is just too gigantic, so I think I'm gonna have to settle for still photos this time around. If you don't mind. There we go. That's that's finished to a good enough degree. I guess I can add lighter highlights. I'll, I'll just add a few on the upper surface so it's, you can see what that might look like. So again, I'm gonna. All right, this is definitely here. I'll just pop in a few of those right here along the central column. Maybe the two on either side of it. Like I said, I if if this was something I had infinite amount of time to spend, if I could do maybe multiple episodes on it, we could spend an entire episode where I just do this, and you would probably turn it off after oh I don't know 16 minutes and 30 seconds because that's how long that we've been doing this segment. So if you're wondering why we're just doing this in a little bit of a truncated way. It's, it's for your benefit too. So this should connect to, to the head pretty well. We'll see if it does. If not, I can always hit it again with the airbrush. I just want to thank everybody that supports the Patreon page. It's it, That's what makes this possible. I would not have had the time, the hours and hours and hours that it took just to move this stuff around and try and get it connected to work in this area. I actually did... 15 or 20 sound and lighting tests before we even got to this stage. So that this has been weeks and weeks and weeks in the making. So I, I appreciate that for folks that maybe if you're seeing this and you're not on the Patreon page yet, I will have a link in the description for you. And I have actually other smaller black heart models busts already done some tutorials on those and lots more on the way and if you want to if you could do me a favor you know, drop a like on this maybe subscribe then you get to the notifications for those live sessions that I I love so much it's all good so thanks again and I will who knows when we'll, we'll do another big one of these again maybe there'll be more a few more of those giant busts show up at the house, and we'll do those too. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. Here, we'll, we'll drag her back up here again so you can see her as the camera fades to black. Here we go. There she is. Yeah. Here, let's get that right on camera there. We'll rotate her around a little bit here. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to remove the pictures there. And we'll just we'll rotate this around and let you get a little view of what we did here on the back. So thanks again everybody, I appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one after we get back from Gen Con.